Я Вадим Краснооки, це Медіа Центр. Я Вадим Краснооки, це Медіа Центр Україна. Я хочу привітати всіх журналістів, які нас сьогодні, щоб розповідати правду про війну в Україні. Ми близько слідуємо ситуацію в Нізі. is to knowing how tense it is. We have uh, the military governor of Luhansk with us, Sergei Haidai. Sergei, greetings. Tell us about this night. Greetings. Well, it has been a usual night. It's been a tense night because the enemy has not ceased its attempt to break through in the, in the direction of Rubizhne, Popasna, and Novotoshkivke towards Horikhova. The shelling has been continuous. They're not daily or nightly. I think we can say the uh, round-the-clock shelling over the territory in Luhansk region, which is under the Ukrainian control, unfortunately, in the direction of Rubizhna and Popasna. Multiple rocket launchers are deployed, artillery, mortars, as well as air strikes, uh, the bombs, Dochka, all are all deployed. The situation is grave there, but our troops are holding their defense positions and uh, repelling the enemy preventing the encirclement of our troops. We know that the Russians have uh, declared that their key objective in the war is to protect the people of Donbass. Uh, as a matter of fact, we see something very contrary, a systemic destruction of people and infrastructure of the region. What would you say to that? The statement of Russia is uh, a complete lie. The whole state of Russia is um, seeped through with lies from beginning to end. Their rhetoric. Is uh, what Russia lives by. They are living by lies. protection of the Russian-speaking people, as they alleged, is a lie, because both Russians living in the territory of Ukraine are killed, and the Russian-speaking Ukrainians are also killed by the same Russian troops. When the new territories were occupied, some billboards came up, don't be afraid to speak Russian. To put up such billboards, don't be afraid to speak Russian in Luhansk, is lunacy. It's nonsense. It, Ukraine isn't Russia. And we clearly know what's going on. The uh, Russian population, which is enslaved, which is living in slums, whilst others uh, are rolling in the luxury when Buryat's ethnic people go to the East uh, to liberate the Russian-speaking Ukrainians, they find some logic there, but it's not something we can understand. We did have our internal domestic difficulties, but these are our family disputes, and we can sort them out perfectly. We can sort out it for ourselves. Look. If we have the modern European centers for, for administrative services erected to help the people, but now they're forcing farmers to go to Luhansk to re-register their business for the so-called Luhansk People Republics, this is something that only evokes the 1970s for our country. So they bring their cave mentality and they take offense when we are ob objecting, when people defecate in the buildings. I remember inaugurating a modern service center. We had the president, the Minister of Defense, the head of presidential office visiting, and I remember a picture of the orcs that liberated as they said, Shulhinka, this place where the center was uh, uh, inaugurated, 
the soldier would defecate right in front of the center. This is all you need to know about the difference between Ukrainians and Russians. Sirhiyo, you have called on the residents of Luhansk to evacuate. How many, many people heeded your advice and how many chose to stay? If we take the first days of full-scale invasion of Russia into Ukraine, the 24th of February, We'll take the area from Krimina to Popasta and calculate all the settlements within that catchment area controlled by Ukraine. There were 350,000 people residing on the area. Currently, there are about 60,000 people remaining, whilst the remainder have left. People have uh, left to buy their vehicle. 40,000 people have been evacuated by the government and the evacuation is still ongoing. This is a rough estimate because we are not seizing the evacuation efforts. They are ongoing, so the number keeps fluctuating. The volunteers have been most helpful. So I would say about 60,000 people remain in the Ukraine-controlled territory. Thank you. In your opinion, how is this war different from the war which started in 2014? Currently, all the masks have fallen. No one is trying to disguise anything, and they behave as their brain, as their soul dictate them. They have shown their true face now. No matter what matters, they keep peddling, they don't care about the residents of Severodonetsk or Lysychansk or Luhansk region as a whole. They're after complete annihilation. They don't care about the people at all. They started shelling kindergartens from the very first days, as well as the nurseries, the uh, retirement homes, the schools, all hospitals. All hospitals, without exception, have come under fire. Some have been ruined. They are looting, they massacre people for the pro-Ukrainian position. This is a clearly manifest genocide of the Ukrainian people. There are many uh, such cases. The execution of the retirement home where 60 elderly were killed. A volunteer with the Ukrainian position, he had a disability, he didn't have a hand, but they came into his house and shot him right in the wheelchair. And I can give you plenty of such examples. I can tell you a horrific situation happening in Rubizhne. Right now, the orcs are stealing children. And then they're forcing the mothers, the women, to go to the positions of the Ukrainian troops under the disguise that they need humanitarian assistance to collect some humanitarian relief or some food and then go back and uh, describe the positions of the Ukrainian troops. If the women decline to do that, then the Russians intimidate them by threatening to execute their children. So the masks have fallen and the only thing that remains for us is to win in this war. Sit here. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for this call and thank you for everything you do for Ukraine in these difficult times. We had said he, Haidai, the head of Luhansk Military State Administration. I'm Vadim Krasnooke. This is Media Center Ukraine. The next briefing is planned for 12 